Welcome friends to our Ash Wednesday service. Welcome to those of you who are here in person this evening and to those who are joining us online. A special thank you to those of you who helped provide dinner this evening. Thank you for that blessing. Hear this call to worship. God sent Christ into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. God's love endures forever. God is our refuge and our strength, a present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountain should shake in the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with tumult, God's love endures forever. Let us pray. Almighty God, you despise nothing that you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who trust in you. Create in us new and contrite hearts, that truly repenting of our sins and acknowledging our brokenness, we may receive from you, the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning, this evening, comes from the prophet Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, it is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes, their like has never been from of old, and will never be again seen anything like them in the ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, Return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, and relenting from punishment. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering, a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet on Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even the infants that are still at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword of the mon among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? So ends the reading of the first scripture. If you would join with me in standing for our first hymn, as you are able, hymn number 433, we'll sing verses 1, 4, and 5.
seated. Psalm 30, a psalm of waiting for divine redemption, a song of ascents. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark my inequities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him there is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its inequities. So ends the reading. And this reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward with your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, for your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart is also.
In the Christian world, there is a fairly well-known Christian author and writer named Jan, Jan Richardson, and she writes often a type of poetry that often seems to almost mimic our psalms in that they are both poetry and prayer. She's written this particular piece for Ash Wednesday, Blessing the Dust. All those days you feel like dust, like dirt. As if all you had to do was turn your face toward the wind and be scattered to the four corners or swept away by the smallest breath as insubstantial. Did you not know what the Holy Spirit can do with dust? This is the day we freely say we are scorched. This is the hour we are marked by what has made it through the burning. This is the moment we ask for the blessing that lives within the ancient ashes that makes its home inside the soil of this sacred earth. So let us be marked, not for sorrow. Let us be marked, not for shame. Let us be marked, not for false humility or for thinking that we are less than we are, but for claiming what God can do within the dust, within the dirt, within the stuff of which the world is made and the stars that blaze in our bones, and the galaxies that spiral inside the smudge we bear.
Every year at the beginning of this Christian Passover season, we celebrate our redemption through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lent is a time where God's beloved people prepare for this celebration and we renew in our lives the Paschal mystery. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our own need for repentance and for the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We begin our journey to Easter with the sign of ashes. This ancient symbolism speaks to the frailty and uncertainty of human life and marks the penitence of this community. You are invited, therefore, in the name of Christ to observe a holy Lent through self-examination and penitence, by prayer and fasting, by works of love, and by meditating on God's word. Now let us bow before God, our creator and redeemer, in a time of silence, of reflection and self-examination. Please remain seated as we join our voices in hymn number 821.
you please join me in our response of reading of Psalm 51? Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, O God of my salvation. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, you will not despise. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. Amen. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be for us a sign of our mortality and our penitence. For it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life. I would invite you now to come forward to the bottom of the stairs to receive the imposition of ashes. Ashes will be marked on your forehead unless you indicate that you would rather have them on your hand by extending it.
Let us pray. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of our Savior, bring us with all your saints to the joy of Christ's resurrection. Amen. Friends, now may the peace of God make you holy in every way and keep you whole in your entire being, soul, spirit, and body, free from every fault at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. <laughs>